John. I know that, Albert. Maybe he's right. If there's that much danger, I'll we... tell you the danger, Ethel. Spending the rest of our lives grubbing somebody else's land for a living. I've had enough of that. We'll straighten this thing out tonight after supper. What I'm trying to say is, he left the mine to all of us, his whole family. But we've got to take possession before January the 15th. Something about taxes, tax liens. We sold everything we had to make this trip. All we've got is in them wagons and on our backs. But we've got to keep going. Snow or no snow. Indians or no Indians. You think anything's worth that risk? Enough gold to make every one of us comfortable for the rest of our lives. That's why I've got to ask you to carry out your bargain with us, Mr. Hale. Just get us to the top of Donner Pass. And we can make it on to Emigrant Gap from there and go on down the valley with no trouble. I know you're going to say it can't be done. But I'm just going to say it's got to be done. And if I say no? Then we'll try to make it on by ourselves. Those people are so good in your trouble? Yeah, a little. They're determined to go on alone. Well, I guess you set them straight on that. I tried, but it didn't do any good. They want me to help them get to the top. You can't argue with people like that. You just have to tell them they can't do it. Well, then they'll go on alone. Well, then they're out of their minds. Maybe, but you just can't let them go off by themselves, and I can't stop them. Flint, I'd like you to take them up. <laughs> Not me. I've got enough on my conscience as it is. Look, Chris, you either boss the train or you don't. You can't have people telling you what to do. Nor can I let them run the chance of killing themselves. Now, don't look at me. I don't want the responsibility of taking a bunch of greenhorns into Donner Summit when they can get snowed in. Nobody knows it's going to snow. Well, nobody knows it won't either. If you want to be a big enough fool to gamble on that, you take them up. If you're afraid to take them, say so. I'm not afraid to take them any place they can walk. Then earn your pay. I'm not paid for making bad decisions. That's your last word? That's my last word. I could make it an order. don't know how mean this country can get. I was hoping Mr. Hale would send you along. They say California is wonderful. They say it's just a place for young people. California's fine. I always figured I might settle down out there myself. Would you come visit me? Well... Please? Sure. You bet I will. Uh, personally, I'm looking forward to resting my bunnies. You know, I'll bet those saloons the Mormon station won't get any rest. Saloons? You mean they got saloons in that town? Well, what do you know about that? Well, sit down, ma'am. You smell awful pretty. Oh. By comparison to some people. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Hale? Well? You gonna let Mr. Muskie do what he wants? You know, Charlie, old man Muskie would make a real good general. He hits Christmas Center, and then he sends a flanker out after Duke. That's the prettiest flanker I've seen in months, too. What do you think I should do, Duke? Well, he's kind of got us over a barrel. We can't let him go on alone, and we haven't got the right to keep him here. I was sort of thinking maybe Flint and I could... Uh... Well, not Flint. Oh? And I can't say as I blame him. Anyway, he'll have to stay here and scout ahead in case the weather lifts and you can break through. I'm going to take him. Chris, you want me to go? Thanks, Bill. But you'll have your hands full here. I was thinking when you get into Donna, you're going to have to double hitch. That musky party isn't exactly handy. Especially that pretty filly. <laughs> That's just about all you can think about, isn't it? It's convenient. Well, I was just thinking I ought to go, that's all. You know, I was going to suggest that maybe Muskie could leave the women folk here, and then you and Chris could take the men over the top. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't do that. We're going to need every... Very funny. All right, Duke, you'll be ready in the morning. We'll take them to the top of Donner. Fine, sir. I better go tell her. I mean, uh, better tell Mr. Muskie. 
I'll tell him. You tell her. Yes, sir. <laughs> It'll be 21 again, huh? Yes, sir. You know, Chris, you're biting off quite a mouthful. Even if it doesn't snow, you still got those Indians to think about. Well, it'll be six men with guns and two wagons. Indians won't like it very well, but I don't think they'll do anything about it. It's the weather. That'll just hold off. We'll be all right. I didn't mean to fly off the handle. It just seems to me like a stupid thing to do. It is stupid. Sometimes you get stuck with stupidity. I guess I figured if I didn't take them, they wouldn't go. Well, I'll take them. Don't you think I can handle it? I didn't say that. It... Just trying to earn my pay. Besides, you belong here with the train. The train will be in good hands with you and Bill. The weatherless, you can scout the pass, and if it's clear, take the train on through. Don't worry about us. We'll be all right. Anyway, the muskies are my personal problem. Put yourself. But, uh, be careful. All set, Bill? Wait. All right, Mr. Muskie. Move him out. Get along now. Cavalry broke a wheel, Mr. Hale. It couldn't be helped. Oh. Well, I checked Forbes' cabin. Even wasn't there, but everything else was, so we can spend the night inside. If I get this wheel off the jack, we'll be ready to go. Oh, Duke! Don't worry about it, Ethel. Wherever that Forbes fellow went, he left the cabin in good shape. Dick will be all right. I hope so. It's just fine, Mr. Hale. Good. Well, I'm going to hate to leave you, Duke. Oh, you got no choice. I can't make it up that path like this. Duke, you're going to be alone with all those Indians. Just till Mr. Hale gets you to the top and on your way. We've left you plenty of food and blankets, Duke. You sure you're going to be all right? I've wintered with the Blackfeet tribe. I reckon I can get along with these fish eaters. We're only going to take one wagon, but we'll have to double hitch that, so we better get started, Muskie. Now don't you worry, none, Duke. What's everybody so upset about? I figured to sit here by a nice warm fire with plenty to eat. Well, you've got to claw your way up that pass. I got the best half of the deal. Well, you see, you take care of yourself. I will. Good luck. Yes, yeah, Duke. Don't be on my account. In this business, you got to expect the worst to happen. If it doesn't, you're way ahead of the game. Now, you get to California and get that mine. Money's not the most important thing in the world. I always wanted to call on a rich gal. You will come calling on me, won't you? I said I would, didn't I? I'll hold you to it. I'll be waiting for you. I reckon you won't have to wait long.
Duke's a very ingenious young man, Miss Muskie. It's so cold in there. He's got a warm cabin. That's more than we've got. Well, you can have it any time you want to turn around. We're doing all right. It hasn't even begun to be tough yet. Well, there comes the snow.
are you so upset about? Still have your gold mine. I shouldn't finish you off right now. Three days. I ain't got no reason like any. Do you understand? Not tea. Come in here and steal what you can find. Just like those friends of yours. Well, you just watch yourself. I still haven't made up my mind what to do about you. You're just lucky I feel like talking to somebody. Otherwise, you'd be coyote bait by now. Don't get loose, don't you? Well, just stop thinking. You're not inside safer, all tied up like that. Not here! Sesame won't do you no good either. <laughs> you sure do look like a real drowned rat. If I'd known you were so puny, maybe they wouldn't have shot you. I just sneezed and knocked you down. this crutch right around your ears. before I get done with you. <laughs> you don't like that, do you? Well, if that was me laying there, you'd already have a fire going on my chest. So you just sweat a little. It'll do you good. Hang 
man, I don't know why I bother with you. Lay still. Cargo nigga. Same to you. Quit robbing cabins, you won't get shot so much. Got no use for thieves. We'll never take baths. Hold still. Here comes that little goody. Yeah. You go to a lot of trouble not to make me mad, Indian. Because I get riled, you're going to get this here bullet's brother right between your eyes. Sammy? Coffee? Thank you. Well, we're going downhill for the next 15 miles tomorrow anyway. Oh, good. Uh, good and bad. Just because the blizzard stopped doesn't mean the drifts are going to get any smaller. We're going to have to send a team out ahead to break them down for the wagon. Miss Muskie, your husband could use a little comfort. He killed my daughter. She was his daughter, too. He was only doing what he thought was best, ma'am. Sometimes things just happen. My baby's dead. Yes. She's dead, but your husband's still alive. I said back there, that was a savage thing to do. I'm sorry. You don't have to be. He was right. No, a man's never right to do a thing like that. You have some coffee. Go on. No, sometimes a man does foolish things. I've often wondered if a woman really understands the responsibility a husband and father has. Sometimes the sheer terror of knowing you haven't done what you should have done for them. It's all more than you've given. Feeding and clothing and taking care of them. Sometimes in this life it isn't too easy to take care of yourself. But when you love someone, well, that's the load a man has to carry. And when things go on bad for a long time, a man can do something foolish. I did once. And I'll never stop blaming myself any more than you will, John. But at least you have a wife left. She needs her husband. We're going to need you too, John, and we're going to get out of here. This is too tough a trip to carry any dead weight. How about coming back to life, huh? Yeah. I guess it's about time. Mr. Hale, that boy back there, Marie, she thought a lot of him. I sure hope he's all right. So do I. <laughs>
difference. I starve to day or tomorrow. Well, you got worse table manners than Charlie Wooster. The only difference between you and him is you talk less. Hell, I could have bent my finger. Sir, you know Charlie get along just fine. Hey, that'd be a good name for you, Charlie. Charlie, uh, Charlie. Charlie, shut up. How's that sound? Charlie, shut up. Aisha. All right. Charlie, shut up it is. Charlie, shut up. You behave yourself. Or I'll belt you when I come back. I'm going out and shoot a vulture or something. about five miles over that rise there. Immigrant Gap's just the other side of that basin. You ought to make it by nightfall. We've been very foolish people, Mr. Hale. If anything's happened to that boy, it'll be our fault. You let us know, Mr. Hale. Yeah, I'll do that. Well, good luck. Godspeed. Get up there! something pretty quick. Sure hate to make us two out of you. How'd you get loose? Easy. Smells pretty good. After we eat, uh, I'll get you some firewood. We only got two chairs left. That was real eating, Charlie. Eat like a wild man. That sort of figures. What was it? What was it? Squirrel? Rabbit? Deer? Pawani. What? Pawani. Ah, uh, what? Charlie, that's a... That's a skunk. Barwani.
Lots of little critters out now that the blizzard's over. I, I reckon I better keep the rifle, Charlie. It's not that I don't trust you. It's just that I'm a better shot than you are. Use your hatchet. You got a skunk with it. You ought to be able to get a rabbit. Wait a minute. It's getting all blue. You go back in the cabin. Too cold. Leave the hunting to me. Gabby in your old age. Charlie, get some water, put it in a bucket, put it in a kettle, and boil it on the fire. And then I'll give you a present. Looks like one of your buddies found out it was no good to eat. Like this. Huh? Hey? 
Make a new mirror. Just like that. You can stand being one. Yeah, it's your turn now. Come on. Come on. Say it! I'm trying to help you! How do you expect to get along in society going around smelling like a mountain goat? Hey, Charlie. You like these, don't you? Huh? Genuine sheepskin coat? Huh? Honest to Pete felt hat. Go on, take a feel. Go on. Make a deal. You take a bath, they're both yours. Ah, ah. You don't get a thing till you get that crust off. busy. Charlie, I'd give a year's pay to have a mirror right now. take one look at you and say you're nothing but a ratty little dried up digger. Probably don't even have a tribe. Fellow look at you in those duds of mine and say you're a clown. But you're no clown, Charlie. You're a man. Much of a man as I've ever known, I reckon. Look what we gotta go through to see that. You try to kill me and I put a bullet in you. I take the bullet out, we half starve, and you have to haul me out of a hole before either one of us can see what's right there all the time. <laughs> Just a couple of human critters trying to keep alive. Think that's kind of funny, Charlie? Nicky Moa. When Chris Hale comes back pretty quick, I want you to come back to the train with me. Meet some of my friends. <laughs> Charlie Wooster. Boy, can he talk. You think that blizzard we had made a lot of noise? <laughs> Bill Hawks. You'll like him. He's a big man. Tough. But he's a fine fellow. Boy, will they have a fit when they see us come in. I think I've been in the hills too long. Nikimoa. You kind of like that, don't you, Charlie? Well, it's yours, no matter what. And when we get back, I'm going to get you dooted up like no Indian ever was. Maybe in San Francisco. I'll get you one of those fancy velvet collars and a big heavy walking stick with a big silver top. Well, you can crack the skull of a buffalo with one of those, Charlie. How's that sound? Pretty good? Nicky Moore. I figured you would. <laughs> you don't have to wear them all the time, Charlie. I've just been sitting here trying to figure what happened to Mr. Hale. Must have made it over the pass. Otherwise, he'd been back here by now. Hmm. What probably happened was he took him all the way into the gap. You're gonna like him, Charlie. I guess Mr. Hale's about the finest man I've ever known. Yes, sir. You're gonna like him.
I'm going down on the flat again, see if I can scare up a rabbit. You going up high again? Stinks of Indian. What are you doing, you dirty thieving? Mr. Hale! Charlie, please listen. He didn't understand. The Duke, he's got your clothes on, I, I thought. shoot each other on sight. Two strangers that haven't got a thing against each other. Well, it's a terrible world sometimes, Duke. But it's the only one there is. If you're gonna have some more weather, you better get your jacket. I haven't